What's up, guys? It's Cat and Dev. Cat and Dev. Dev. <laughs> Two market girls. For today's Whatever Wednesday, we're doing something a little bit different. We're making somebody else's recipe. One, to show off the recipe and the amazing food blogger behind it. But two, we're also going to show you how we would film and photograph this recipe. So I'll be showing you how I would film it, and Kat's going to show you how she will photograph it. Yeah. And then Muriel is also doing the same thing on her channel with one of our recipes. Today I'm going to be shooting their vegan Korean barbecue burger. And I'm going to take you behind the scenes and share with you a little bit more about my setup, my lighting, the accessories that I use, and why. So Muriel Banakisa, I hope we got that right, I'm sorry if we didn't, um, she's a vegan food blogger from Montreal, Canada, so fellow Canadian, what what, what, what? Um, and she also takes incredible food photos, like we just scroll through her photos all the time, we're like, uh, why, why don't, we could do that, right? Yeah, well, like she's a so she's a food photographer for a living. This is what she does in her real life, <laughs> and like it shows. It's so good. And by the way, Kat, you can totally do it. I, I'm trying. <laughs> hey, brands, hire me. <laughs> and I guess the other struggle here will be like for both of us when we're filming or shooting stuff, we kind of use each other to help make that process easier. So doing it alone is making it harder but we're still on a video call right now to, just for moral support <laughs> yeah so this is gonna be a very like not formal video we're gonna be filming ourselves on our phones because we're using the cameras to shoot and then we're also gonna be on chat <laughs> yes okay so should we just should we just get to work cat yeah all right good luck <laughs> good luck you're doing great <laughs> doing I've looked through the recipe and so I know all the steps and I've even gone ahead and laid out all of the ingredients so that I'm not totally scatterbrained so usually I just get to try to keep keep up with Catherine when I'm filming <laughs> and that goes fine but now I need to have everything laid out so that I just go through the steps and I can focus on filming because I want to get a diverse variety of shots so that means moving my one camera a lot so let me show you what this looks like right now So before I actually get into the photos, I want to just like address the food styling aspects of it. Um, depending on the recipe, you have to start kind of thinking about the food styling even before you're like setting up your photo. So while I was making this recipe, I was like weighing out ingredients and making sure everything was even so that all the cups were the exact same so that in the photo there's some consistency. It's like those little things that kind of help out a lot. I also went with a slightly different styling choice than she did in her original ones. She did them with mini muffin tins. I made them with like normal size muffin tins, so they're like a peanut butter cup. Before I get into also setting up, what I was doing before this was kind of like looking for inspo online of other photos, um, just so I know kind of like the vibe I'm going for. So I set up a Pinterest board. I'll insert clips of the Pinterest board, or Devin will insert clips of the Pinterest board here. Of like photos that like inspired me that I thought might be good and colors and that kind of stuff so that I'm not starting from nothing. There's the setup. This is also a huge window, so I'm getting really good natural light right now. And so as you saw, I have all the ingredients laid out. So now I'm just going to add each ingredient to the food processor and try to get 
have three different shots in mind and I've catered them to the type of ingredient and how it will work for them. So for the cocoa powder and the almond butter, they're kind of just going to be simple overhead shots. For the dates, I'm going to zoom in that overhead shot because the dates have nice texture that I want to capture. And then for the hazelnuts, I think a head-on shot because slow-mo of pouring them in could look kind of nice. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, it's all in the food processor. That didn't go as smoothly as I wanted it to. Um, but something else to note is I didn't even have my food processor on the rest of it because then it would be too high up and my camera wouldn't be able to get the overhead shot. So you gotta just improvise to make it work sometimes. Um, something to note that when I am filming is I'm usually always shooting in a frame rate that allows me to slow it down in post. So that's why you'll see a lot of the sweeping movements that I'll do sometimes. And when I am pouring something, I know that if I want it to look more cinematic, I can just slow it down in post and make it look even better. Um, so that's one of my like, like secret go-to things when I'm, especially with food. It just, it looks so good, right? Okay, so this is the board I think I'm gonna go with. So the reason I picked this one is because a lot of the ingredients are actually very warm. So like dates and hazelnuts, they've got like warm colors to them. So I wanted the like cooler tone board to kind of like help balance that out in the photo, but it also has like warmer tones in it. So it'll still complement it. So now I'm just gonna throw up some props that I think might go with it. I probably won't use all of it, it's going to be like just things that I think I might use so that I have it all out and I can kind of play around with it as I'm shooting. So got some props that I think I'm going to play around with and see what works. Um, so an important prop that I wanted to bring up that like isn't just like a plate or a utensil or something like that is the actual ingredients in the photo. Um, they kind of help tell the story, the process of how it was made, what goes into it, all that kind of stuff. And they're usually beautiful and in this photo and in this recipe they are. There's hazelnuts and chocolate and dates and they're really pretty ingredients. So make sure to use those in your photos as well whether it's in a bowl or on the board or something like that. So I'm just kind of setting up the shot and just kind of testing to see how the light is, which I'm liking, but one thing that I do notice is you don't really see any hazelnuts in it, so I'm going to move what's in the bowl over there. I'm going to take the hazelnuts out and put them in the like nut grinder thing so that you see it in the background of the shot. You can see the hazelnuts in the background a little bit. You see the chocolate. I'm going to put some chocolate in that pour thing, some melted chocolate so that there's more there, and you see some dates in the background. And then we're going to start putting the subjects in here and start, start kind of putting in the layers so that you kind of get the story. quick note with that tray shot I just did because I want it in a certain spot 
I'm actually gonna reverse it in post so that it'll go in, it'll look like it's going in perfectly right in the right spot, but instead you pull it out of the shot and reverse it and that's how you get a smooth shot placement. Most of the time that will work. Okay, now, now to the actual hard part. everything set up with the chocolate everything that I think is gonna work so I'm gonna put in the little chocolate cups in and then start taking some photos now I wanted to speak to you a little bit about the camera settings that I'm using the aperture and the shutter speed and all that kind of stuff um, obviously it differs depending on the photo but for this particular one that I'm taking I have it at a shutter speed of 125, which is pretty normal. I usually keep it around there if I'm using handheld or if I'm using tri um, putting it on a tripod, but that's easy to change if I need some more light or anything like that. But I usually keep it around 125. Um, and then the aperture is where it changes, kind of depending on the type of photo I want. So for this, I have my aperture at 3.5, meaning you've got a lot of blur going on in the background and kind of the only thing that's in focus is the subject, the very, very main subject. Um, if I wanted everything in focus, I would make it bigger, so something like an eight or an 11. Um, but usually I don't really go that way unless I'm doing overhead shots and I want to make sure everything is in the right focus. But for shots like this where I'm kind of try trying to create that depth of field, um, I usually keep it around the 2.8 to four range. Uh, depending on the thing and th depending on the subject and 3.5 works for this one and then my ISO is sitting at 100 right now I try and keep it as low as possible so that we're getting as little grain as possible but my camera's pretty good so it can go up higher if it needs to be but the good thing about this is that I have a lot more flexibility in my settings and keeping them where I want them because I use flash so I wanted to talk about that as well flash photography is something that I've been using for about a year now and I think it's the best light for food, in my opinion, because you can control it. Especially when taking fo food photos and you want all the lighting to be the same so that your editing's easier because you're taking a lot of photos or you just want the same feel for all your photos, a flash or something that keeps the same kind of light going um, is ideal because you can play around with the different types of light, but you can also keep it stable and steady and you can keep it all the same and you're not subject to a changing photo just because clouds came out or the sun came out or it decided to rain um, and that also means I can shoot at 10 o'clock at night if I wanted to. Uh, so basically I just have my flash set up with a soft box. It's got two layers of diffusion so that it's really soft light and then I use a bounce over here to help bounce and fill out the shadows a little bit. Okay, so now that the um, base layer has to sit in the freezer for I think at least 30 minutes, I'm going to do the shots for the chocolate layer that goes on top. So let me show you what I decided for that is because it's pretty simple. It's just adding coconut oil and chocolate to a bowl and then melting it in a microwave. It doesn't lend itself to a lot of shots but I like to sometimes do a jump cut when I can. So this is, what, this is what it looks like in the camera. And then I'm using these grid lines so that the bowl will be in the same place because I'm gonna add the coconut oil and the chocolate and then I'm gonna pull it out, put it in the microwave, melt it, and put it back in the exact same spot so that when I edit together, it's just gonna be like snap and it's done. And I just thought that's a simple way to make this shot a little bit more interesting. And then the only other thing I need to shoot is chopping up some hazelnuts. And that'll probably be like a head-on shot fairly close up to get maybe slow-mo of that. Slow-mo nut chopping. Um,
So I've got a few shots using the tripod, which I really, really like. Okay, so I have one more shot that I wanna take this way, and it is, I wanna make like a GIF of it stacking. So I'm gonna do that. Again, need the tripod for that. I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna switch to overhead and kind of keep the same setup, but just kind of play around with little things so that it works better for an overhead shot versus like a straight on shot. But I don't really do the, I do always use a trigger for this. It's not a fancy thing. I think it costs like $10. Um, just so that I'm not moving the camera every time I like press the trigger on the camera. Cause I don't want there to be a shake. I want it to be a very seamless, just stacking shot. Now that I've got that shot done and I know I've got all this stuff done, I'm going to switch to an overhead shot. I usually do those by hand or I set up the tripod overhead. Uh, I'm just probably gonna do it by hand this time. But now I'm gonna lay out all of the um, little cups in a way that makes sense for an overhead shot. Okay, the base is out of the freezer now. Chocolate is melted. Hazelnuts are chopped now. For this one, for this last shot, this is pretty much, yeah, the last shot. That chocolate drizzling into the cups is the movement and the action that I want to capture. So movement is a huge thing that makes your shots more interesting, right? But when you're shooting on your own and your camera is just on a tripod, you don't get the same amount of movement as I would if I was just like following cat's movements, right? So that's why I do change the angle so much because that helps compensate for that. So yeah. I'm using angles to compensate. Whatever, I'm owning up to it, it's fine. It's a technique, it's a part of the process. Um, so anyways, I'm going to try and get a diverse number of shots for that, and hopefully I can get like that nice glistening of the chocolate as it catches the light, slow it down in post, and maybe it'll look pretty okay. And same with like um, sprinkling the chopped nuts on top. So yeah, we'll see, see how this goes, here we go. Something else I just thought of to note, um, with the camera that's on the tripod right now, it has pretty good autofocus, so especially when I'm shooting food alone, I will do a lot of shots with that because I can mostly trust the autofocus, but when I'm shooting with Kat and when I'm shooting the nice b-roll on the bigger camera that you're seeing, that is all manual focus because I'm working the focus the entire time I'm shooting, so just something to note about the process and what makes it a little bit trickier sometimes is you're watching what you're doing but you're also trying to make sure that the focus is staying where you want it to go. Um, yeah. that I want to take I want to do something a little different I want to do more detail shots and really like close up shots so I want to try and cut off part of the bottom so that they sit on their sides um, and then cut them in half so they look like they're just like half stacked with some ingredients more macro style shots so I'm gonna get that set up probably just gonna use the wood board just so there's some consistency in the style of it don't like to change up in the same shoot um, and then I'm gonna put some like hazelnuts and dates and chocolate all around. So just have the ingredients all around it. Just got it all set up. I'm gonna put the little bites in here so that all the ingredients are kind of surrounding it. While those freeze, I can kind of talk about props a little bit more. Um, so the reason why we went with certain props, you know, I wanted them all the same tone, the same hue, the same kind of story, but I did a mixture of like rustic props. Just like the wood board, the board that it's on, cleaner props with the plates, and then different textures like linens, utensils and things like that, and the metals and the glass. You want kind of a variety of textures so that you get this more um, interesting photo and it has more of a story and like most people's homes are very eclectic and beautiful so it kind of makes it look like it's somebody's home. Right, now I'm gonna prep them for the photo. So I'm gonna cut off their ends so that they stand up like that. But I'm also gonna cut them in half 
so that I see their insides. I took a couple with my 35, but I'm actually gonna change my lens to my 100 mil macro so I get all the lovely detail in there. That turned out really nice. I'm happy with this. I'm very glad I did this. Okay, so the chocolate cups have set, and while they were setting, I was setting up the final like B-roll shot where I'm going to just place them and do some nice movement. Usually, um, like I shoot this on the bigger camera, I'm doing one tripod shot, and that's just gonna be for placing the cups on into the set, and then I'll have the moving camera to get kind of those sweeping shots, the close-up ones, and that's where I try to get fancy and more cinematic. So yeah, let's, uh, let's wrap this up. Hopefully they turned out okay. <laughs> oh. interesting and like you could understand it <laughs> <laughs> I think it because like we don't usually do a video like this where we really go into our process it was kind of an unfamiliar thing for us to do but I I think I hope it went well it yeah. was fun right I also feel like it was harder to do this without each other being here because like Devin could film me while I'm shooting and I could film Devin while she was shooting but we can't do that like this anymore Man, that would have been so good. <laughs> but yeah, no, I hope you got something. There were so many shots of my butt in this video. <laughs> I don't know if Devin will include them. I hope not. <laughs> I hope you were able to actually see the angles and all that kind of stuff. But if you liked videos like this, let us know because it would be interesting to make more videos about like our, the food photography and videography side of it. And of course, we'll have a link to the recipe that we made of Muriel's in this video and also a link to her video about making our recipe so definitely go check that out subscribe to her follow her on instagram she also has a really great newsletter all about food photography highly recommend it she has like a free downloadable ebook about boring food i think photographing boring food which is something we've talked about too and it's super helpful so i'd recommend downloading that as well what should we talk about in the comments uh food photography Videography. Yeah. If there's anything you want to learn about what we do and how we make the content that we do, drop us a question. Yeah, if you have questions about anything or all that kind of stuff, or if, like, I think we touched on a lot, like, lightly on a lot of different things in this video. If there's stuff you want to learn a little bit more about, like, flash photography or, like, pro like slow-mo shots and stuff like that, we can do more dedicated videos. So let us know. Yeah. And this is also the kind of thing that we will talk about on our podcast sometimes too. So that's called Camera Eats First. It comes out every Monday, everywhere that you get podcasts. So go give that a listen. We talk about making our videos. We talk about running our blog and vegan news. So it, it kind of has more of that stuff. It's not totally just recipe focused. And then oh, yeah. uh, be sure to subscribe. Devin, I wanted to up. ask you something before we sign oh, off. I know yes. this is a long video already, but I want to know what your thought, like how it was filming and doing like our type of videography with somebody else's recipe with somebody else's food yeah um it was fine because either way it's somebody else's food usually because it's your food right <laughs> um yeah so yeah that part that part was fine i just had to i was more familiar with the recipe than i normally would be because usually i'm just like on the fly following you and just going with the flow um, but this time I had to make sure to do my research and think it through more before I started shooting, so. Yeah. Mine was, like, I was, like, trying so hard to make sure I didn't get, like, because, like, when you learn about a recipe and find a recipe, you associate that recipe with that person's photos, like, their original photos. So it's, like, I need to figure out a way to make this my own and not just be, like, oh, this photo looks so good. So, like, I did a lot of research beforehand of how other people shoot, like, chocolate cups and stuff like that uh, to make sure ours were different. Because it's very easy to, like, 
not like copy somebody, but it's very easy to get like overly inspired by one photo or one kind of style. But it was fun. I think I made it my own. So <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna be it from us. So um, bye. Bye. Good work today. Yeah, this is such a long video. Mm hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I would. This would be smooth sailing for me, but you know, it's it's not. I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine, Catherine. I just miss you. Okay.